Welcome to Rick's Scale Model Fix and part 8 of Kinetics 148 Scale Harrier GR3 build. Quite a lot of work has taken place since the last video and we've managed to get the drop tanks, the undercarriage bays and doors, air brake and all the decals on the undersurface of the airframe now. So the drop tanks have been added and it's worth noting that we've had good information received here at Rick Scale Model Fix that the pylons on the wings of all the Kinetic Harriers sit about 5mm too forward. Uh, for the drop tanks they should sit slightly further back. So we had a moral dilemma with this one, as in do I correct it? But then I've also got three other kinetic harriers all built and if I correct one at this stage then it's going to look odd if displayed with the others so the decision was taken to actually leave the inboard pylons as they were with the drop tanks as kinetic intended and that was also said for the outboard pylons as well so they've not been altered on this model but should you choose to do so then there's some really good information on how to do that available on the IPMS UK Harrier SIG website. So all the decals have been added now to the undercarriage doors and the air brake if you can see the V in the back of there and also on the front of the outriggers if it will uh, camera will focus. So all intents and purposes the model's now finished it's just a question of adding all the smaller breakable bits. I've added the heads up display mount to stave that getting bro broken off and we've also done some work on the ejector seat. So having a delve round in the drawers under my desk I have quite a lot of Eddard etched sets that have come in to Rick Scale Model Fix at various points and I actually had one for zoom set for the Kinetic T-Bird T-Harrier so two seat version and in there it includes a set of edge seat belts. So the kit ejector seat was built up as described in the instruction booklet. And then the details added as you can see there. So some placards and some bracketry for the rear of the seat with the seat belts and the harness. Overall the colours aren't brilliant, I don't think, with that one. I don't know if you can see those on camera. But the overall effect when the ejector seat was completed is adequate, I think. Some of the colours are a bit choice. So we matted the seat down, spread the frame black, give it a grey flurry model's wash, and that's now ready to be added to the airframe. Any jet that has a large pitot tube sat at the front of the nose is just asking for problems with it being broken off. So to that end, Master AM48069 was purchased for, I think they're about three quid. And that's a lovely turned brass pitot tube that's going to be far stronger and resilient than the kit's plastic part and also more in scale. So that will need adding. So as you can see it says to drill a hole um, 0.5mm which we can easily do at that part of the Harrier so there's that to do. And then we made the decision to go with some weaponry on the outboard pylons. So we've delved again into the aftermarket stash and we've dragged out some uh, Eddard Brassin BL755 cluster bombs and they need to be painted up and added to the model. So there's four in the set, I think they're about eight quid. And they're quite well detailed, you don't fully appreciate the detail on these until they're actually primed. But uh, these are the parts, so they need the casting block cutting off and the uh, fuse vanes at the front are separate parts as well. And a full set of decals there. So we've just been in the process of painting those. 
And last but not least, the aftermarket additions are going to be the English or the RAF type removed before flight tag from Adad again. So we've got some of those, so that we're going to stick those on. So the cockpit canopy is, is in two parts in the kinetic kit as we saw previously in the build. So with the framework having been deckled and then we gave it a matte coat, we've added the clear section onto this. I don't know if the camera can pick the clear up. And we've secured that in place with micro crystal clear as it dries clear as the name suggests and doesn't fog or damage the canopy. The MDC, uh, the micro detonation cord in the top of the canopy, is moulded from the inside. There is a decal on the decal sheet for it, but to be honest, I think it's that pronounced that uh, we could actually leave that as it is. So that needs to be added to the model. The other thing we've done is we've started painting some of the clear lights up. Now, unfortunately, the model that I'm building should have a conical later anti-collision beacon but they're not provided in the kit so unfortunately we're going to have to go with the older sort of dome teardrop size ones so that's it there's still quite a bit to do we're at the stage with the Harrier now where really it needs a matte coat we've painted the eyelids for the laser camera on the nose and it's just sat there now but there is a few little bits that we need to do and one of those is to add a bit more wash just to this panel behind the cockpit and that's once the cockpit's been dry fitted it become apparent that the detail there is actually visible so we just need to make that look a little bit more in keeping with the rest of the kit so we're just going to add that now just around these areas just to make it stand out and then we'll let that dry and we'll remove that so it's all these little jobs we're still waiting for the paint to dry on the elevators, tail planes. So they've been painted and uh, the underside is just drying behind me. I'll drag them over and we can have a look. Uh, we've got these painted up. And the undersides and we just need the top sides doing as well. And hopefully you can see that. Getting there, nearly dry, these so work can commence on those, and that's the other side. So the blue tack uh, that are held in place there, they're just getting touched dry, has left some little marks, so we'll need to take care of those. And these are the EDAD cluster bomb units, uh, they're more or less dry as well, so work can commence on those. So the EDAD cluster bomb units I've had the front part of the uh, bodywork um, painted and the instructions call for a darker green at the tail end so we're just going to mask these using uh, tell me a masking tape it has been detacked on my hand just to make sure that we don't lift anything, any of the fresh paint work up. Like so, and then we'll just wrap that round. It gives us a handhold, and we're just checking that it's nice and neat, which it is. We'll just quickly uh, to hold these, make it easier for painting. I drilled a hole in the top of the resin with uh, a one mil drill bit and actually I think it's half a mil drill bit but it just means it's a nice size for that cocktail stick to just sit in there which means it's nice and easy to hold it so 
So these have been uh, painted, the front of the unit has been painted with Humbrol 116 and we're just going to paint the tail section Humbrol 149 which are the equivalents to the guns colours that uh, Ed had called out in their instruction booklet. I've had this paint years, so I don't know what's Looks like a brand new tint. So we'll give it a good stir up. It's quite thick. In all fairness, I think the last time I used this tin of green was uh, to paint cluster bombs on my two seat Harrier. Seems to ring a bell. We'll just get all that pigment woken up. So we're going to mix this with cellulose thinners. And we're going to mix it quite thin. And we're just going to, as always, within when I'm using enamels, we're just going to put uh, a few drops of Rustin's paint dryers in the colour cup just to speed the dry time up. Flows good. So we're just going to bring these in now and we're just going to paint the tail unit. Nice even coats, nice and thin. I'll just check the other one, make sure. And we'll clean the airbrush out. So the eagle eyed amongst you would notice that I actually sprayed the tail and the body of the BL755 the wrong way round. So that's been corrected and the decals have started to be applied. So we've got two units and we're going to put these one under each uh, pylon on uh, the Harrier. So quite nice, quite well detailed uh, units there from uh, Edad. So it comes with complete decal sheet and uh, painting guide and everything. So uh, if you if you noticed in the video, I actually transposed those round, not paying attention. So we're just putting the last remaining decal on the cluster bomb. Just get that in place. a bit ham-fisted of me. It just needs to tease this back. Never so slightly. It's a bit too long for the body. The white stripe just needs its end. Just trimming. And I'll just roll the knife blade on that. Some decal setting solution, just using Deco's red. And there we go. So there, once those, those are dry, we shall add them to the model that's waiting. So just quick tidy up. So as you can see, quite a lot of work's progressed just off camera. Just all the small boring bits. So we've managed to 
put on some of the aerials, lamps and lenses. So all the clear parts have been attached with micro crystal clear just to save any uh, any risk of damaging the canopies uh, with fogging and we've fabricated the window there for the camera the model that I've depicted should have a conical anti-collision beacon here but unfortunately the kit doesn't include those so we've had to put the older teardrop style on. They've just been painted Tamiya clear red. And the wingtip navigation lights have been added as well. So we've got uh, green and red and they're painted from underneath. So the model is nearly finished. It just needs those cluster bomb units added. And some removed before flight tags. So that draws a conclusion to Kinetic's 148 scale Harrier GR3 build. And I'm quite pleased with the results overall, and it certainly fills a gap in the early Harrier family. A couple of thank yous. So a big thank you first and foremost to Kinetic Model Kits for producing the Harrier and also supplying the kit used in this video. A big thank you to the IPMS UK Harrier Special Interest Group for the information they provided, enabling me to portray XZ997 as accurately as possible. Also a shout out to Melissa if you're watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video more than Mr Tumble. Stay tuned everybody because there are some bonus reference shots for Harriers after the credits. So until next time everybody please look after yourselves, stay well and take care.